Okay, drop. This keeps up. We're getting snow on the weekend, but we, this could all be gone a week from now. Okay, warning to everybody. I talk a lot in this video. Have patience. Hope you stick around. Enjoy. Oh. Like, subscribe, and share. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Woodland Reboot. Peter here at the Reboot. I'm here in the cozy cabin. There's blue. I've got the direct vent heater going. Let's see if we can take a look in there and if you can see the flame. Do we see? Yeah, there's the flame right there. All right, guys and gals, I'm inside because I want to show you something that I'm working on. And this is going to be essentially the next phase, the next big phase of some of my activities out here at the Woodland Reboot. And so just give me a second. I'll get you a view of the things that I'm, I'm looking at here on my desk. So here's an aerial view of the property. Um, Google Maps combined with obviously the um, property lines here in the area. And this one here obviously is my property. I've got this faded picture as well as this newer print off which has a better color to it just a faded piece of paper i'm using this one because you can actually see the ink here you can't see the ink this aerial photo was taken before the red barn was built the red barn sits there the cabin i'm sitting in right now is here so the big plan going forward is to build a house not a big house just a thousand square feet on a foundation no basement three bedroom Nice small house, smaller house, back here in what I call the back acres, away from the noise of the road and quite secluded, quite a nice area back there. The lines here that you see, these are the power lines that I'm going to bring in from Ontario Hydro Grid up here at the roadway. And so the first line, which feeds off of this pole here, you can see the shadow there. That's a, the bottom of the pole, power pole is right there. This is 75 meters long. And in the second one, I have conflicting information from different contractors at this time. This one can either be 75 or 90 meters long. If I'm correct, 75 meters is approximately, I say approximately, 250 feet. And then this one be, would be between 250 to 280 feet. Now, those are the main lines. And this involves actually installing a pole here and a pole here. You'll also see a line between the first pole and the red barn. And so yes, the idea is to connect the red barn to the grid. But the idea is I'm gonna do this project in two phases. So phase one is to get the two poles in, but bring power only to the barn at this time. I don't foresee getting to actual construction this summer concerning the house. There are some things that need to be finished on the red barn. I want to get those done, buttoned up, get the power in there, call that done. But the construction of the house, I think, is a summer away. And here's the first drawing I've received concerning the house plan. I've commissioned a firm here in the Ottawa area. Let me see if I can bring that up for everybody. Dustin Design and Drafting. It's a very simple house, so I don't think I need to go full core architecture here. Great young guy with that company. So I'll probably introduce you to Dustin in uh, future videos. The house drawing is 18 by 52. You can already see that there's a bit of a problem here with the, with the drawing. I received this with some questions from Dustin indicating that, you know, maybe some of the dimensions aren't quite working out. So probably going to move the depth of the house to 20 feet, maintaining the 52 wide. Anyways, very simple, straightforward layout. This side of the house, you have the master bedroom suite, master bedroom, walk-in closet, small bathroom. You come out of the master bedroom, you've got the main bathroom with a utility room buried in behind it. And then you come out into the main living area, open kitchen with two bedrooms off on the right side of this house. Again, that's the direction the house will be facing. And on the property, so that would be the front of the house facing south, generally. And that's the direction that that south facing is right there. Great views into the uh, acres back there, by the way. There's some of the brush will need to be cleaned up. It's still some great views. As I said, this is the first one. Just getting the general layout done. And obviously 
indicating that there might be some challenges with the dimensions that I'd like to try to keep the house at. I think adding an extra two feet in the depth is not a big change to the size that I'm trying to uh, to obtain. But um, yeah, I'm pretty pre pretty happy with the way things are going. I've actually commissioned this, so I'm paying some money to get these drawings done. So this is serious. I think if some of you remember, I'm going to say maybe about, might have been a year and a half ago, I presented plans for a tiny house uh, and actually did a little video on it. I might connect it here up above my head and you guys can go take a look at that. That didn't take off. It didn't take off for a couple of reasons. Number one being that you can't do a house in the jurisdiction where I have this property that is smaller than 807 square feet. So the house that I was proposing or tiny house that I was proposing before was in the six to or five to 600 square feet range. So that didn't work. Um, so I shelved that plan for a while. I've got this one that I'm now working on. And again, first phase, power to the red barn and then start the construction the year later on the house, bring the power in, etc. The other thing that I'm trying to do with this project, um, it's going to be a project with uh, full electric power. There's going to be no propane, no oil, no other type of uh, gases involved. And I'm doing that because those prices continue to rise. Yes, there may be some dips, but overall those, those um, uh, fossil fuels are rising here in Canada. There are taxes on those fossil fuels here in Canada. And I live in a jurisdiction or in a province for the most part where electricity, not cheap, not as expensive as other parts of North America. In Ontario, fossil fuels make up a very tiny proportion of power generation. I think it's, I'm going to say it's below 15%. I think the majority is nuclear, perhaps not great, but that's where the main source of our uh, electricity comes from. Again, fossil fuels playing a small role. So the idea here is to electrify this property and in the process, put a small solar field in place. We do net metering here in Ontario, just to give you an idea, to make this project completely off grid with no connection to the grid would probably cost me $40,000 to electrify the barn and this, this house to ensure, and the main cost there being the batteries. With the net metering, as most of you know, in jurisdictions jurisdictions where you have net metering, uh, the grid becomes your battery. So it cuts a lot of the cost out of that type of a project. You don't have to buy the batteries. So I'm going to start with, I think, around six kilowatts of solar panels so that it may not zero out the electrical bill completely between the two buildings, but I think it'll be close. It's a smaller house. Um, the shop doesn't get used every day. And so I think it'll, it'll work. And if it doesn't, I'll add a few more panels for an, in fact, I've already got two panels sitting on this roof. They're going to be added to the new kit that I purchase. So that's the plan. Let's go outside, take a look at a few things just to give you, um, you know, show you the initial work that the hydro crew did putting a few stakes, taking measurements, and letting me know where poles are likely to be located and uh, what, can, what I can expect when their contract arrives, hopefully within the next week or two. Let's go outside and have a look around. Still a little nippy out here, even though it is spring here in Eastern Ontario, I'm gonna say in the sunshine out here, maybe it's five degrees. So I'm gonna say that that's maybe close to like, I don't know, 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyways, let me go inside here and show everybody a couple things. Okay, so I have not finished the insulation in this corner, nor have I finished it in this corner over here. The original plan was to have the power panel over here. You can see I've got some of the lines already brought in there. But with the new location of the hydropole on the property, essentially right at the corner of that little thicket of uh, bushes there, connector coming in over here, the panel's gonna be over here in this corner. So what I'm gonna do over the next day or so, maybe even this afternoon, is take out some of the wires that you see coming in there, some of the wiring into this area, um, take it out, and sometime in the next month or two, maybe, maybe not even the next month or two, sometime before I would say September, I'm definitely gonna have an electrician in here. He's going to complete the wiring, 
And that's, I'm going to bring him in because I'm also going to need, I believe, some heavier wires to be installed because I'm probably going to put an electric heater in that corner, that corner, actually in each of the four corners. So up here, here, and boy, everybody, I got to tell you one thing that I'm really kind of keen about, thrilled, happy about, small things make me happy, is that right up here with the power to the building, oh, I'm going to install a garage door opener. Okay, let's uh, get the lights off in here. Again, remember, I've got a cottage solar panel kit that provides me with light power inside the shop right now. Not much else. Actually, I can I can run 15 amp tools off that as well. Let's yeah. head up to that big hydro pole up on the street, and I'll show you what the plan is, or generally what the plan is that I talked about inside the cabin a few minutes ago. So there's that rather large power pole right there. Now, what they've told me the technician is that they're going to take this opportunity to actually replace this pole and they're replacing these poles with composite poles and i've got to tell you i another big relief is that he thought for a minute that i might have to eat the cost on that that composite pole and the insulation would probably cost he said somewhere between 15 and 18 thousand dollars just for that one pole that would have killed the project he uh got on the horn talked to his supervisor found out that a pole like that of course is part of the infrastructure and that if they decide to replace it it would be on them anyways they're going to do what they call is a primary tap or connection into that pole why isn't that focusing there it is primary connection 75 meters as i mentioned to a pole on my property back down this way up oh, before i head down i don't know if you guys can see it from here there uh and there you can see some red stakes that he's put in the ground and that's to uh to mark uh some of the measurements that he started making the other day okay let's head back down and take a look where that new next pole is going to so go the connecting wire is going to come off that pole over my little roadway here and head down in that direction the pole going in the ground over there is going to be 45 feet in height that means that you get the proper clearance above the roadway here. here there's the trailer. So the pole, as I understand it, is probably going to go in the ground, probably right in, you know, maybe 10 to 15 feet to the right of blue there, right in here somewhere. See, the next leg heads off in that direction, and you have to, I believe it's a three-meter circle around the projected line that you have to clear out of the way. Now, there are trees and bushes, as you can see there. It's not as bad as you think. Let me show you what I mean. Wow, the sun has come out and it is bright out here in the snow. Really bright. This is former farmland. I don't know when it was last farm, but when you come back here, like there's all there are, you know, remnants of fields everywhere. So, I'm going to say about 30 meters back that way is where the pole would be. So there's some clearing out to do here. Then there's not much. And you see that tree right there. I believe the power line is probably going to be about 20 to 30 feet to the left of that. So I will have to cut a, a laneway for a lineway. I don't know what to call it. Through some of these cedars here. Um, but, you know, it's not a big, deep, thick forest. As you can see, a lot of these are only an inch and a half to two inches in diameter. So they're small trees. It really actually shouldn't be a big job. And the height is not horrible. The biggest tree being that one off there in the distance. All right. It is bright out here. This is actually hurting my eyes. It was not sunny a half hour ago. Might have to throw some shades on. Okay, that's the introduction of the next big phase of projects out here at the Reboot property. Again, this is a project phase we're looking at, you know, over the next two years. And the other part of the project, which I hadn't mentioned earlier, is that I'm going to have to obviously build a roadway going back there also. That's an aspect of the project that I hope to get done this summer, fall season as well. Okay, everyone, thanks for checking in. Hope you're enjoying this update. Please subscribe, like, and share. Look forward to seeing you back in uh, future weeks.